David, I can't remember the last time we've looked at so many different commodities at the same time. So let's start things off. Let's look at soybean oil and let's look at crude. What's driving those prices and where do things go from here? So, well, as you said, you know, there's a really broad momentum across commodities, and that's really being driven quite broadly by, by two, uh, two factors. One is that, you know, major economies emerging from the pandemic, that, that means motorists are back on the, on the roads, that's boosting energy prices, manufacturing's back on, that, that's good for metals. We're also seeing, as you've highlighted, food demand increase as well. Uh, a lot of that's also down to poor weather in some key growing regions, which is the uh, denting supply also, we see transport. Uh, we've, we've seen bottlenecks in transportation also um, harming the supply side. So, particularly in in the case of soybean, um, you know, supplies are tight. We're seeing very sharp rising Chinese demand, and also, particularly with that commodity, you know, often used in cooking, but now increasingly also used to make fuel. We're seeing big crude oil refiners like Phillips 66 and others. They're boosting output of soy heavy renewable diesel. So it's getting a, a, new, a new demand source just as supply is tight. Uh, and that really is uh, charting that rally. Um, you know, crude too, as we mentioned, you know, people back on the roads, um, back in their cars, um, that's really seen the glut of oil inventories reduce. We've seen prices surge back to pre-pandemic levels. So uh, pretty strong story across the board. It, it does bring to mind this bottleneck cost plus inflation conversation with, with obviously your, uh, the commodity markets playing a big, big part to that. Uh, let's talk about corn. So we mentioned corn, copper, you have seven bucks, 10,000, of course, are the levels we're tracking here. What's driving those gains? I mean, classic, classic supply and demand dynamics in many senses. You know, corn, as you've mentioned, um, you know, corn used to feed hog herds. And, you know, we've got China uh, racing to replenish uh, its stock of hogs after uh, after the African swine flu outbreak in recent years. Um, so, you know, demand side really rallying. At the same time, we're seeing, you know, problems in supply. You know, dryness is, is certainly hurting crops in places like Brazil, the U.S. and Europe, really key growing regions. Um, so, so that's really having the impact on corn for copper. Again, you know, construction's back on. So we're seeing more metal needed for wiring and for piping. Adding to that the fact that copper really is seen as a key commodity for the energy transition. You know, copper is needed in uh, not only sort of, you know, air conditioning units, but in renewable energy. Um, so we're seeing, again, big demand there and supply disruptions, not only in places like Chile with COVID, but really just because the biggest copper mines are getting older and yielding less metal. Um, so uh, constructive, uh, constructive story there.